Okay. The first word that I've written here is skeleton. And when I write skeleton, you guys think, well, I'm not going to draw a skeleton, so why are you writing skeleton? I want to draw a good body. And if you do draw a body, and all you think about is the body, and you draw it for like 10 years straight, you will eventually draw a really good body. Your brain will only adapt. Your brain will only learn more and more. However, there is a certain ignorance to that, saying that I, I don't need to think about all this other stuff. All I need to do is draw the flesh, and I'm good enough to go. Well, I'm telling you these things because they will speed up the learning process. And there's a lot of benefits of a sped up learning process. It means you will receive the result earlier. It means that you will be, whatever the result is, whether it's your goal for work for being featured on Imagine FX, or if it's um, your goal to be, to, to, to get the highest paying job in Hollywood, whatever it is, I want you guys to think about the way that you will benefit from this. And realize that you can, you can only learn from this class and it's not nothing is being forced upon you but these are shortcuts that I am providing you with okay the first thing that I've written and it is the most important thing to figure drawing is skeleton I'm not saying memorize the skeletal structure we're not doctors here we're not going for our me medical degree I am saying learn about the function of the skeleton remember what I said earlier the function try to be part of the thinking process realize with me that these things work realize what these are the skeletal structure is found not in the whole figure and some of you draw figures as if the skeletal structure is everywhere there is a part where the skeletal structure ends there is a part where flesh begins and muscle begins, but the first thing that comes is the skeletal structure. And the skeletal structure can be found in different areas in this body. Some areas don't have skeletal structure, and how do we identify them? By learning where the skeletal structure is to begin with, and understanding that when you do draw the buttocks, or you do draw the thighs, or you do draw the arms or the, or the biceps, those areas don't have skeletal structure. However, when you draw elbows, when you draw knees and shins, these are all areas with skeletal structure. When you draw the rib cage, when you draw the neck or part of the neck, and when you draw the head, these are all skeletal structures. It means that when you start with your figure and you are constructing the basic shapes that go into this figure, how do you represent the skeletal part? That doesn't make any sense. Well, some people have told me here, to, to, to start with, with simple shapes. Square for this, circle for this, a couple of these, and there we go, I have the basic shape. But does this explain to you the true matter that you're drawing? Does this explain to you the mass that you're drawing? What this is going to lead you to is a very still image, and it works good for cartoons, it works good for cartoonists. Um, and, uh, and, and those who, who study, you know, the basic, you know, they don't really care that much about anatomy in their practice, let's say, so if they're working for Disney or whatever. They're not going to be so concerned with the skeletal structure. However, for us, we are going towards the, 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 art, the art epitome, the, 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 the zenith of art perfection. All of us want to, before we jump down into cartooning and forget all the rules. Some areas, when you draw them, and you begin to think about what needs to be done in order to emulate this movement here, this gesture, there are some areas that have to represent the bones. But how do you do that? What are bones? Bones are just linear structures, very, uh, structures very dense. They're built to keep the body sturdy, to keep the flesh together. Because flesh isn't structure. It is, um, flesh doesn't reflect the structure. Flesh reflects the attachment. When you, when you begin a, a figure drawing, the first and foremost thing to do after hearing all, uh, say, me saying all of this, is the lines. But lines are very, very tricky. They can look very stiff, and people get obsessed with lines, and, and, and people don't think about the basic function of the line. Lines can only be made with gestures involved. Lines can't be designed like this. This is not what I mean by lines at all. I don't mean stickmen. These are lines. They can't, can be, they can't be confused in it as anything else. They're lines. However, these are gestures. They're representing some sort of movement going on. They are a direction. They are a pointer. They point to the gesture. However, they are not the actual thing we're going for. 
They are leading us. They are helping us towards the most essential thing about figure drawing, which is, as I said, skeletal structure. Skeletal structure, when you begin a drawing, has to be formed in a way that it anticipates the flesh that is coming, but covers the skeletal structure that is required. So let's say we're drawing an arm. This is how I basically design the gesture drawing for an arm when I first start it. Why do I do this? Because I need these basic lines to keep my mind together when I'm adding the flesh later on. And this is how I basically add flesh. Do you see how I didn't outline the line with flesh in certain areas? This is how bone structure works. If you see an arm or an x-ray of an arm, you will see that this bone structure here, though I, I admit I'm not fully familiar with all the names of the bones, but let me refer to them basically. The upper arm bone is encased in the fat and the muscle. However, the lower arm bone, as I have become familiar with, stems across, just barely in the center point, leaning against a part of the arm that is meant to, to have solidity, which is the forearm, and the fat falls off towards the muscles. This is because it anticipates movement, it anticipates the necessity of the muscle. When you lift objects, when you lower objects, the muscle is more effective on the inside, because that is what you're going to be resisting against. The muscle helps pull the bone along with the ligaments and everything else. This is a function. This is something I want you to know. I want you to know that this is what happens when you look at an arm. The muscle supports the bone. So how do you guys draw this in your work? Well first you have to be familiar with the skeletal structure. What are these bones for? And this is why we do spot studies or why we do study arms for, for a month and then study legs for a month. We want to know the function. It also helps to observe your own arm in work. You are, you are constantly um, in exposure of a reference, which is yourself. You constantly have a reference. You, you, all you have to do is observe. And like Sherlock says, <laughs> you see, but you do not observe. I want you guys to observe from now on. I don't want you guys to just see it. And that's why I want you to be involved in the thinking process. I'm not just one person lecturing you, and though it might seem like that. I want you to be a part of this process. Someone said, well, with a burqa on, we wouldn't see much of the model at all. Um, I'm Muslim. Females cover up with the burqa. In Muslim, and in some places, aren't even allowed to show ankles. Um, I would think it's the other way around. People observe focus. Um, I would want you guys to focus because I'm here and I'm talking about a subject and some of you are here I'm not sure if some of you are here for a simple friendly conversation but conversation hasn't yet started conversation is only before or after a class so please try to focus because I'm, I'm providing you with all that I know and I would like I would appreciate I just like some attention and some focus okay so please focus all right um, I thought the bone supported the muscle. Anyways, what I want you to think about next time you design an arm is think about the way the gesture is reflected in the bone structure. Without the bone structure, we wouldn't have much of the gesture. However, there is a certain fluidity and curvedness to this, the muscle structure when it is added. But it all really depends on the direction of the lines. What do the lines provide? The lines provide structure and stability, and they work as signifiers. And what I mean by signifiers, let me try to explain it. Signifiers for drawing an arm are the elbow for me, the elbow and the first joint and the last joint. These are signifiers, more like things that you'll need, like if you're in a map and you see a large mountain, you know that you're in this certain area because of your relative closeness or, the, or, or distance from the mountain. Understanding where the elbow is and understanding where these endpoints are helps you develop the muscle structure. So that's one beneficial thing of understanding the uh, skeletal structure. Stability, when you do draw the muscle structure in and you draw it without skeletal understanding, what you will have is a very floppy sausage-like effect to your drawings. And I've seen this so much in beginners. And the beginners that try to draw, drawing a human isn't an easy thing. People still study what a human is all about, biologically, anthropologically, psychologically. 
So imagine how difficult it is to study a human being. And to draw a human being, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's not just drawing sausages or drawing what an arm is and calling it your original character. It's about understanding what this object you're drawing is. What is the function behind it? And what the first thing to do is think about the skeletal structure. The skeletal structure also offers you the gesture, which is the general movement, the direction, the general look of it, the general parameter of, 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 of movement covered or space covered, the object's movement or action in the space it is in. When you think about the skeletal structure, and the, all of these have been applied, what happens is that when you look at a subject like this, it becomes very easily broken down. You know that you'll need the line first. You know that these areas here, let me make the here, here, and here are all muscle. And you don't need to worry about those right away. What happens when beginner artists think about these muscle structures right when they're drawing, they try to cover everything all in one set of lines. And that is the first mistake. You you become overwhelmed with the amount of information you have to represent within these lines. And you guys think it's all just lines. And that's not what I mean by lines. What, what I'm saying right lines right now, what you guys think about lines is that you think that's outlines. I just have to put the outlines in the right amount of spot and, you know, the right amount of stuff, and then I'm a good artist. No, that's not what it means. When I say lines, it means movement of direction. And I want you all to write that down. Okay? Sorry, let me make a note here. Okay, lines represent the movement of direction or the movement in direction or it's just one big bundle of fact which is lines are the direction of the movement. That's number one and that is the most important thing about gesture drawings. Fluidity and stability are produced when you think about the lines and the, and the structure and the skeleton beneath all of this fat and muscle. And this, this is a lot that I'm saying right now. This is at least, to understand this completely, you need to spend at least a month just studying skeletons. But it doesn't have to be that hard. All you have to do is just simply accept the fact that there are good guidelines, good um, landmarks. Skeletons are good guiding direction things, let's say, that help you when you are on your, 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 your muscle phase, to add the muscles in the right spot. Skeleton also helps you determine the sizes of the muscle. What kind of skeleton are you drawing? What kind of image are you trying to portray? Are you trying to portray a masculine figure? Or are you trying to portray a feminine figure? Feminine bones tend to be a lot thinner, slimmer, in art at least. And I'm not claiming I'm a you know professional in, in, in medicine or skeletal structure, or whatever they call those doctors that study bones. Forgive me for being ignorant. Your understanding of these skeletal structures will lead you to a more fluid image. And the fluid image is all, is, it's all about that. And one of the biggest epidemics that I see in art is stiff drawing and arms that are too small, but they're the right size and length, but they're not the right size and width. Because the person thinks it's just a, a piece of fat they forget that there's a whole active system in this, in this single object, which is just the arm. Let's just focus on the arm because it's too much for me to talk, try to talk about the whole figure here. And I'm, this is how the pattern is going to be for the class. I'm going to be covering it piece by piece. Every day is going to be a different piece. And today will be about arms, as you might have already guessed. The system that goes into the arms is a matter of pull and push. The arm pulls and pushes. Of course, it gets raised and lowers as well. It closes and opens. But in, in most of the gestures that we will be following, or most of the gestures that you will be asked to draw in your career as an artist, will be the push and pull gesture, meaning the arm is either being pushed forward or pulled inward. Of course, you can't just draw a couple of outlines and then fade, shade them in with a simple understanding of light and shadow and expect it to be convincing to artists who have a more familiar understanding of the function. You sure as heck won't convince a, a person who studies bone for, bones for a living. When you think about the push and pull, and push and pull, I'm trying to say, it means everything that the arm does. When you're pushing upward, when you're raising your arms like this ballet stance here that we see, this person is pushing upward. When you're pushing downward, there's a pull, 
meaning the gravity. And that leads me to my next fact. When you draw, and you are drawing an arm, and the arm is in the air, something happens to the muscles. And you guys don't think about this. The muscle attaches to the fat and pulls, the fat attaches to the muscle and pulls the fat and the muscle down. The gravity pulls the fat down, pulling the muscle down with it. Muscles change according to how you think about the pull of gravity. Gravity pulls down the fat. The arm looks different when it's raised up. When it's lowered down, other parts are visible, meaning the fat of the, of the triceps bulging against your, your upper body when it's tucked in. And when you raise your arm, the fat of the forearm here and here. They're bulging because there's compression and pull and a lot of fat being represented along with muscle. This, this knowledge helps you as well form characters that are larger in weight or, or, or mass, fatter characters, I hate that word, but characters that have more fat essentially. It helps you think about the system in a more godlike, well, let's not say godlike, in a more outward perspective. You get to see the whole image and yet understand the whole image as if you were looking down into a map. When you think about an arm that is being pulled up, what is the function? Sometimes the object is pulling something, so it's a sword pulling something against gravity. And gravity plays a huge role in figures. Gravity is why we are figures. Gravity is why we need skeletal structure. If we don't have skeletal structure, we won't be able to stand. Our spine keeps us alive, keeps us uh, um, uh, lit, let's say. I want to say lit. I don't want to say standing because I want you to think about it in a different, more active way. Keeps us upward. When I think about skeletal structure and I think about the, the, the gravity, I have a very difficult time trying to make the character look like they're standing on something. The character, when I used to start out, always looked like they were floating. And I had a very difficult time drawing feet because I didn't understand what the function of feet was. Or Yes. When I started thinking about the function behind these anatomical figures, I realized that it's not just the figure that I should be thinking about actively in my, th in my mind. Again, think with me actively, guys. All 46 of you, think with me actively. What is the use of gravity? It's to keep us stable, to pull us downward. And when we think about this, we realize one very essential fact, that we are constantly moving upward. That there is a constant pull upward. If it was up to us, and not some godly inspiration to stay standing and, and, and live our lives. We would all just be lying on the ground, parallel to everything else that has been pulled downward. Parallel meaning the surface of the earth. And there's a reason why the earth is round, because of the pull, the constant uniform pull down into the center of the earth, keeping everything essentially, or in, in illusion, flat. We are constantly moving upward against the downward pull of the movement of gravity. So this is us. And this is gravity. And there's a reason why the she looks she looks so elegant. There is a essentially, yeah, bones are great. Bones are why we are here. <laughs> bones are why I can hold my, my, my tablet and, and hold my pen here and, and teach you guys things. Bones are what ke are keeping my my throat straight so that I could make the voice and make my and make my, my, my words and speak to you. It's keeping us structured. So why this beautiful thing just in the skeletal structure? Why do we forget to represent it in art? And that's why I really want you to think about the bigger picture. It'll help you develop an epiphany, which will lead you to appreciate more and more the power of bones and representing bones in your drawing. The pull down, the downward pull that I'm talking about. Is the upward pull, sorry, of the body against the downward pull of the of gravity makes these structures form the way they do. And think about it this way. When you, are th when you are drawing a character, and the character is on a very stable ground, think about other structures that move against gravity. They'll help you envision the movement of the, of the figure. Think about a tree. A tree may be simplified. A tree doesn't have a circulatory system or a skeletal structure. But it is standing up, uh, up against gravity. And that is because of the stability of its trunk 
its denseness and its mass and the fact that it is built uniformly the reason there, there's a reason why we we aren't built this way our arm is here our body is here and our leg is here and our head is all the way here there's a reason why we are moving upward there's a reason why we are elongated gravity has less an, uh, of an effect on you when you are vertical than when you are horizontal and ask any scientist that and they'll prove it to you buildings that are built this way have a tendency to fall faster than buildings that are built vertically and uniform everything is dense so when you draw an object such as a body and you want to emulate that body's stability think about the trunk of the body and that's what I always do when I draw a figure that is standing I think about the base I think about the flatness of the base which is the essentially the surface of the earth or the surface of the ground whatever it is I then think about the vertical upward movement of the body against the downward movement of gravity. I then think about the essential skeletal structure and the gesture involved in it. After that I think about the fat and how the fat falls on top, but that fat is for another day. What I mean to say through all of this is that the function when it is realized the result of the function, which is the figure, becomes easy, becomes more understood. And if something is understood thoroughly, that rep that is represented in your drawing. And that is why teachers, when they mark, they they mark an understanding. There's a specific word that I used to always see in my in my essays after I, they were marked: understanding, understanding, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge and understanding is, the, is, is what knowledge is all about, essentially. You guys have to understand what is going on. Not just memorize the terms, the symbols, the, the, the specific little lingos and, and the euphemisms of the topic. Understand the function. Okay? So does everyone understand that? Does everyone know what I'm talking about? It's very dense and it talks about a lot of stuff. But I, I hope, I hope, me putting them in these words, and these words are signifiers, they're not the things themselves. I want you guys to understand only these, that the function that we're, we'll be covering in this figure drawing class. And this is sort of like an introduction. And never has anything been more important to me than making you guys understand the power of skeletal structure. It is underrated, it is not explained well in many, many art books. And I love how some art books, when they begin a drawing, when artists begin a drawing, they don't begin the drawing with a basic shape. And I forget which art book it is. It's not Loomis or Hogarth. It is another art book I found in my art class a long time ago. And when the artist began, they didn't begin with a basic shape for the forearm. What made me realize this all the way back in grade 12 was that he began with the skeleton. And I, I, very, I suck very badly at drawing skeletons. But he began with the skeleton as the starting rough. He didn't begin with a basic shape, which is one big mistake a lot of art teachers make. They begin with a basic shape. Oh, draw a sausage. Oh, draw a triangle. No, I'm sorry I made the British... <laughs> I don't mean anything by that. Um, but what I mean to say is, understanding the skeletal structure is part one of drawing an arm. No, I don't. Okay? So does everyone understand the power of the skeletal structure? Does everyone know what I mean by this term? And I want to know everyone is on the same page because I don't want to jump into the power of pull represented by muscle and fat and density and, and, and all of that other stuff. Um, okay, everyone, everyone on the same page? Hand system where you divide the body into two triangles and represents the joints as circles. Yes? Okay. So now that we understand the power of skeletal structure, how can we go on without thinking about the, the function of this, of this skeleton? Let me show you something. Some of us have the illusion that skeletons can only be drawn. I, I, really, I, really, I really believe that this is one big problem. And... Let me sh let me give me a second here. Let's stop. People don't realize there's a skeleton till they see an actual skeleton. And I'm going to desensitize you right now. I'm going to burn your minds with this. Skeletons 
if some of you haven't already realized this, and I'm sure some of the more quoted of you have realized this, skeletons are real. And they are realer than, I don't even know. What, what is so real to you? What can be so real to you that it scares you? Skeletons are there. And I know that's, oh no, duh, no shit. But skeletons are freaky. Skeletons are dense. Skeletons are something that we think of as scary. Skeletons are some very cliche, make some very cliche costumes in Halloween. What I want you guys to think about when I say skeleton is that there would be no flesh and there would be no us without skeletons. Okay? So when you think about next time when you draw a drawing, there should be a burn in your mind saying, are you thinking about the skeleton? Did you ignore everything that that crazy lady said? Okay? Let me show you something a little bit more gruesome. And I'm sorry. Skeletons are dense objects, and they can break, and they're brittle, and they're not so heavy that our muscles can't support them. They're not so thin that, our, that they don't carry our muscles. There's a fine balance in between them. But what happens when the muscle is larger than the skeleton? And this is me jumping into the, 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 skele the, the, the muscle part of this lecture, and that's in a pull situation. If this lady was overweight, if she had more fat than she has muscle structure or body mass index or however you want to refer to it, the fat would represent the pull more. There would be more fat down here being represented in the pull. The fat would move downward. This is the pull of gravity. There would be much more fat being pulled downward over in this area. There's going to be stacking, a lot of stacking. Stacking is when you put one sandbag over another sandbag over another sandbag. How do these sandbags change their form? How does the mass go horizontal instead of vertical? Remember, gravity is sometimes our worst enemy. It makes us, it makes one, it wants to make everything horizontal and proportionate and parallel to the surface of the earth. It doesn't want anything standing, but it's at a point where things can stand and things can be supported vertically. Fat is the perfect example or the perfect study for me to, sh to represent to you how strong this pull of gravity is. So if she was overweight, there would be stacking, such as the stacking of the fat of the thighs or the stacking of the, over the fat of the muscles. Sandbag, sandbag. This gravity, you cannot draw a fat person, I'm sorry to say this term, without thinking about the pull of gravity. Some of you have to draw a fat character for the game design or something and you go like this. They start to look like the Michelin mascot guy. Some of you start your sketches like this. I want you all to admit it. Whoever does this, admit it to me now. Because I want to I want to shine the spotlight on you and I want to make you have a more uh, efficient realization from this class. Some of you forget that the fat structure, though it hangs off the skeleton, is entirely dependent on the pull of gravity and if without gravity we wouldn't have any understanding of what it means to be overweight we would all just float horizontally or vertically Our, the horizontal thing would, would no longer be an issue and we would all start growing like this and we'd be perfect spheres here and here however we are not perfect spheres and the horizontal pull pulls everything along the skeleton downward these are the shapes that we should be thinking about imagine you got um, what's something very squishy? Imagine you got marshmallows. Well, not marshmallows are pretty stable in shape. Um, something very squishy that you put in a kebab stick, and then you hold it up, and then instead of going downward as if you hold it this way, facing this way, all of the objects would pull down. Same thing as if you were holding it vertically, all these objects would pull downward. But they have to hang on something very essential, and that is the the, the kebab stick, which is the skeletal structure. Which, which results in rolls and flabs of a thick person. Yes, okay? Think kebab stick. Another thing you have to think about, which is another word that I stated, is stability. Does this kebab stick look like it's standing on its own? 
And this is something very miraculous, us standing on our own. Us thinking about the way humans developed standing has, has, has not only divided religions, but it's kept us in constant, at the edge of scientific discovery. Meaning, how did the monkey begin to think, to stand on its own? How did we develop that vertical pride, that stance that does not require a bend? Animals are horizontal, think horizontally built, small legs, wide horizontal bodies. Just think of it like that, even if you disagree with the whole notion of creation or whatever. Think of it like that. The vertical stance. How do you represent the stability? How do you draw something that doesn't look like it's floating on thin air? So some of you, though, you might understand fat structure. And I'm using the sausage thing right here. This is not how I actually draw. Your objects look like they're floating when they're standing up. They don't look like they're actually standing. The only thing incredible about this is that you've kept the, the, the character stacking upwards instead of stacking horizontally. And some of you do have this issue where you make everything look like it's haunched over. The stability of something that looks like it's standing upward means that there is a compression. Not only is there a pull, there is a resistance. I want you guys to draw this diagram as well. There is a resistance. The resistance is our mass and our skeletal structure keeping us upward. It is strong enough to keep us standing. Sorry, what the heck was that? It is strong enough to keep us standing. But there is a clash. There is a point when there is enough pull and enough push that we begin to see a stacking. And the stacking is visible near the lower parts of the body. And there is a reason why our largest bones are in the bottom part of our bodies on the lower half. The reason, there's a reason why women have long, stronger leg structures than men do. Because not only do they have larger butts, let's say, of yours truly, I have the largest butt in the world. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. But there is a responsibility for women to carry larger, heavier objects, such as babies and pregnancy. Therefore, the pull becomes even more hard. Women age faster than men do because of the pull that they experience when they become pregnant. So do you see do you see how everything develops? All the bone structures from the knees to the shins to the hips, especially in the hip area. That's where the contact is. This is the area of compression that I told you about. The hips represent this compression. The area of the thighs especially. This is why women are heavier lower than men are. Men are upward. They don't have much. The, 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 the fat is spread in the high, higher area of the body upward, therefore, you know, pulling and pushing, and I don't want to go into that whole gender relations conversation. So this compression is, is represented very quickly when, when you understand the pregnant woman and how she st stays standing up despite the fact that she is like twice as heavy or, or a quarter more heavy than she really is. Okay? So does everyone know what I mean by compression? Does that, do I have any questions here? Yes, that's true. Shell. Does anyone have any questions? I'm just going to wait for questions. Sorry about the YouTube people that are watching this and you're like, oh God, I don't want another one of those. Just anyone with questions? Yes, Nizir, go ahead. So before she asked, the, or he asked the question, um, I want you guys to, to really consider all of this. If, if I upload this, I want you to go over it again at least twice more. Because I want you to think about all the function that goes around. You guys don't think about the function, you think about the representation. And we're not copycats. We're scientists in our own right. We have to understand the, the systems of things in order to really emulate them well. And there is a reason why Da Vinci is so celebrated. He didn't just represent things through symbols and lines and, 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 and forms. What he did was he tried to understand the scientific aspect of the subjects he was drawing. And that's no easy thing to do, but it, but it is involved. It is one big part of art. Do you draw bones in 3D and perspective? Good question. Bones are three-dimensional subjects. They are not flat, and they are not actual lines. However, lines, because we are drawing on a 2D surface, Zax, we are drawing on a 2D object here. This monitor of mine is entirely two-dimensional. There is no 3D aspect involved, of at all, involved in it at all, other than the fact that it's a monitor. It's reflecting a 2D thing digitally. What's inside the monitor is two-dimensional. The monitor itself is three-dimensional. Don't get me wrong. So 
do you draw bones in 3D in perspective? The lines help us overlap or the lines help us defeat the limitation of the paper and the pencil. They help us create 3D objects easier by guiding us to, to, to the direction of movement that these 3D objects are in. So if you look at this lady here, I can easily simplify her drawing by adding a line here that helps me represent where she is pointing to. But at the same time, I don't want you just to draw a line because then you're just going to draw sausages on top. I want you to know what this line is representing. There's an actual line in here. If you do an x-ray, it's going to be a bone. There's an actual line, but this bone isn't a line. This bone is a 3D subject. So when you do draw her arm, think about the way the arm will spread the fat. I'm just going to exaggerate it so you guys can see. The fat is spread differently than a sausage would through a kebab stick. Okay, the other question, um, do you use shapes? Um, shapes are easy shortcuts to represent fat structures, but you have to know the kind of shape for the kind of structure. You can use a circle or a semicircle or an elongated circle or a mushed circle to represent biceps and buttocks. It's a very easy um, um, deduction in art. Okay, but remember that the circles you use have to represent the subject or the shapes you use. You can't use circles all around unless you get the sausage look. The other question is, um, why is the pull stronger if it's on the bottom? You aren't top heavy. People have the same problem with the pull. I hope that's not a stupid... No, it's not a stupid question. No, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Everyone wants to learn. We only learn through questions. <clears throat> why is the, the pull stronger? I was talking about the clash, and there's a part where the fat clashes with the the stable part and that the clash is the, the sag and what I mean to say is when women are carrying an object usually when you carry an object that's heavy do you want to put it on top of your body like when let's say you're carrying um, uh, let's say those women in Africa or women in Iraq or women in India who carry all the crops on their head would their job be much easier if they were to carry the object like this the pull would be stronger because there's no vertical stability beneath this heavy object filled with fruits and wheat and all that stuff. You would put it on top. And that's essentially what I'm trying to explain to you. I'm not going to go into a physics lecture, but I'm trying to explain to you how the body is built vertically to keep the fat vertical. And when it, there is something heavy, like the pregnancy or an anticipated pregnancy in a woman's structure, this is the difference between fa male and female figures that you have to remember. If this woman that you draw were to be pregnant, would she have the stable body enough to carry that pregnant body? That's function for you. That's the power of function. If you don't think about the function, you don't think about the pull, you don't think about the push, you don't think about the stability, and therefore you don't draw a successful, successfully looking figure and you're not a good artist. No one wants to be a sucky artist. and That's a bad term, but I, but I want to express to you the, the, the power of understanding the function. So do you know what I mean, Nazir? The pull and the push, there's a clash. And the clash is the, ba the way the body is built, the way we're bio biologically built. Women are bottom heavy. Women are sort of topish heavy. Bottom heavy meaning the fat is collected there to support the bones that are stronger there to keep the pregnancy and the breasts and everything else that is heavier in a woman on the top part upward. Women are also top heavy. That's why we have strength in the bottom. It's not top heavy or bottom heavy. It's a matter of keeping the object above you or above the physical strength or the vertical thing that supports the object. Okay? So basically, women's skeletons are built to support them carrying heavier, heavier weight. Exactly. But that is weight inside the female. How about the weight outside the body? That's what men are supposed to be building. Men are supposed to be built for. Men don't have to deal with pregnancy or instilled weight. Men are top-heavy, meaning there will be a problem later on that the body is anticipating. Men pull and push actual in actuality men's bodies. Ask, Talk to any bio, any, any bio major. They will tell you that the men's skeletal structure is built to anticipate work. Now, I know this is a huge bash in, in the women's movement, but I really want you guys to think about this. There's nothing that, that I'm saying here that is against the fact that women can lift and, and, and I mean, we're responsible to take a pounding in biological uh, responsibility to be pregnant and to feed the child until they're God knows how age, how old, and we can be pregnant up until 50 years old on average. So this is not me saying... Um, that men are stronger than women. Men, men's bodies, there is also a push and pull, but the men's bodies are built top heavy, not necessarily um, stronger than women, but the, the top part of the body, let's say that we use that analogy again of the, of the Indian or African Iraqi woman carrying something on top of her head filled with fruits. 
There is a reason why we carry them up on the top of our heads because we need our whole body to support this. I know I sure as heck can't carry a rice bag, a big bag of rice inside the house without carrying it on top of my shoulder. There's no way I can carry it and I'd break my back or I'd hurt my legs because my body, the lower part of my body, isn't heavy enough to be able to support it if I carry it with just my arms. So, what is happening here with men? Men's bodies are built higher, meaning stronger biceps, stronger arms and stronger chest to anticipate holding something with your arms. Legs aren't so important anymore. They can be stru structured um, very, very strong. Men do have a, a certain degree more muscles than women do, but that's to support the weight that is anticipated here. I don't see men carrying stuff on their head. I see women carrying stuff on their head. I've been to Iraq and I've gone through the, the fields Men have a much easier time holding something on their back or holding something in their arms than holding something on their head because the top part is heavy. So how do you emulate all this in a drawing? How do you think about all this in a drawing? Well, function equals form. Function leads to intelligence in art, representing that knowledge in art. Function, understanding the function, leads to a better drawing. Now, a lot of you know women have curves. A lot of you have taken those social signifiers and drawn women with curves, and you've seen all of the drawings that Picasso did and how he represented them. But Picasso, again, I've, I've talked about the Picasso speech, and some of you are curious, what the heck is this Picasso, Picasso speech? Picasso didn't understand the form of, you know, how to represent something abstract without understanding the function first. Picasso was a genius in proportions. Don't take him wrong. Don't take him as if he's some, you know, someone who just only drew in, in abstractions. No. He, understand, he understood the actual biological structure, but that bored him, and that was his specific taste in art. But he wasn't able to understand or, or reflect the female form and shapes. And it was very, people are celebrate his choice of shapes because he understood the function of the body first and then represented it through an abstract shape. And that's why he's so celebrated. His work was very thought through. He didn't just draw an abstract shape here, added a couple of color gradients and call it a day. No, there was a lot of thought process and people understood him as a person instead of analyzing them as a single piece of art. And this is the power of function. This is the power of understanding function. If you, are if you intend on creating or, or drawing the most sophisticated form in the planet, which is the human body, you have to understand the function. Period. Does everyone understand what I just said? It's a big statement. But if you want to draw this sophisticated form here and all that goes into it, you have to understand the function. When you go into color, and you understand, and you jump into the world of color, which is a very difficult world. You not only will have to understand color theory, you'll have to understand the circulatory system. The circulatory system is what 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 makes her feet a little bit redder, and her arms and, and hands a little bit redder, and her cheeks a little bit redder than everything else. There's a reason why the extreme ends of the body have more blood in them or more red in drawings. Have you ever asked yourself? There's one drawing, uh, one painting by. Um, I was doing a study on it a couple days ago. Let me find it. By what's his face? Valero. Valero. And I've noticed that all of the reds are connected near the end. He adds a lot of reds, very, very peachy coral reds near the edges of the figures that he draws. And that's one of the greatest things I love about this artist is that he understands the blood. But why does the blood collect there? Again, function. Understand the function. The, these are areas where the blood goes in and then goes back out. And everyone knows that the collection of blood, either downward or upward, collects here in the edge. Therefore, more blood is visible. The skin there is also a little bit more transparent to help the breathing process of the, of the hands and feet to keep everything insulated because of the amount of heat that is transferred there because of the blood and circulatory system. Falero, F-E-L-R-O. F-E-L-E-R-O, -E excuse me. F-A, what? Falero, F-E-L. A-R-O, or I'm not sure how you spell it. Okay, F-E, change the E and the A. So do you understand now the function, the power of function? Today's class is essentially the function of figures. If you don't think about these functions, your drawing will fail. And that sucks. That sucks big time. You don't want your drawing to fail. You don't want your drawing to look crappy. You don't want to look like you know nothing. You don't want to look like you didn't take fine art school. And for anyone here who is curious, I never took art school. This is all stuff that you can, it's possible. 
you can learn on your own and all you have to do is just think about um, the function of the body that you're working on and there's tons of resources online there's tons of books out there that explain the function of human bodies and it's not gonna hurt you to own one or two books on on the biology of a human being it's not gonna hurt to, 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 to look at the way the sexual uh, organs work it's not gonna hurt you to look at the way the bones break to look at medical medical uh, medical journals this is only gonna expand your knowledge so does everyone think about this now does everyone did everyone have that little teensy bit of epiphany whether it was a little bit or a lot and if you already knew this do you understand now how much what it was that you knew let's think about other functions that are caused by gravity and the pull and push the bending of the arms let's go back to this drawing the bending of the arms here there's a reason why arms bend upward instead of bend downwards. There's no, there's no point in the arm bending downward or the other way, meaning that if the arm bent backward, because essentially the arm is, has the higher muscles, triceps are lower muscles, not as strong as the biceps on the top. So when we're pulling against gravity, remember the essential rule on gravity. Gravity pulls us down and we move up. Our bodies are built to move against gravity. The fact that we're standing is a miracle on its own. If you guys measure the power of gravity and acceleration, you'd be crazed at the amount of knowledge there is. And the fact that we can still stand despite all the pounds and pounds, tons and tons of air and atmosphere above us, and the fact that we can still stand up, all of this is very essential to drawing. Okay? Why does the arm bend this way instead of bend this way? Because the pull, our bodies are built to pull upward, to push against it push against gravity. They bend upward because there will be moments when we have to push upward against gravity. So therefore, the skeletal structure is supported by muscles. And the strongest muscles are on the top, not on the bottom. These muscles are called biceps. They help keep the arm upward. These help these. This muscle here in this corner helps this muscle here in this corner. When you have an injury in this muscle here, it screws up the whole arm. Ask anyone. When you have a screw up in your in your hip you're done your, your leg is, is practically useless because these muscles support the muscles on the bottom however if you have a problem with your foot you're done too your this muscle helps this muscle it's all a matter of function there's a reason why we're built the way we are and that reason is gravity there's a reason why we stand upward instead of um, work downward there's a reason why we're called the sophisticated and any, any religious or atheist or theist or whatever view, any anthropological view, anything. There's a reason why we stand upward and we're considered the ones with the brains because our brains are at the top while animals share it horizontally with everything else that crawls on its stomach. We are a miracle in the fact that we can just stand. And that's what I mean by function. I want you all to think about the power of this standing character that you're drawing. You are going to be drawing a human, a sophisticated biological structure on a surface. How can you possibly think you can draw this? How can you possibly think you can emulate the power of this structure without understanding the pull and push, without understanding gravity, without thinking about the way the muscles work to help keep this object upward? There's other objects here that, re that, res that, that respond to the push and pull, which is the spine. The spine plays a big role, and I'm going to be jumping into the spine, and today was about arms specifically, but it seems I have to cover more. The spine, the way it's built, isn't built straight. There are curves involved. If an object was built straight, like this, there is no horizontal anticipation. There are muscles here. Be bon bones don't bend unless you have that elasticity. Bones don't bend or break, but muscles do. However, the bone forms around the muscle and the muscle forms around the bone therein. The way our spine is designed, and some of you don't know this or haven't realized it, is curved. It anticipates the fat here and here and here that will be required. There is a certain bend here, a horizontal movement. What is, what is this horizontal movement doing? It's helping us anticipate the, 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 the power of the pull of gravity. It is very destructive pull. And when you have a form that is built horizontally as well as, as well as vertically, what you get is a stable character. Let me ask you this. What is more stable? A building or a stick in the ground? What is more stable against hurricanes? A building 
no matter how high it goes, or a pole, a light pole. Yes, everything is designed to anticipate the horizontal pole of gravity that forces you to be horizontal. But if you already have a horizontal anticipation, which is like the building, your gravity is, you, you got gravity, you're one step ahead of gravity. And you show gravity that, yes, keep on pulling, you're only going to make me stronger. And that's why objects like the, like the spine anticipate that horizontal. See this horizontal movement here? It is helping this bend. And not only is it, not only is it, does it bend, but it can contort and keep gravity at bay. A pole doesn't necessarily have less wind resistance. A pole needs to be deep into the ground in order to be able to stand on its own. A pole does not have wind resistance. It may be less susceptible to the horizontal, um, you know, like a, like, a, like a racket against the wind, but it needs to be deep into the ground to be able to hold itself up. A pole, if you haven't noticed, in, in really bad weather, um, moves around because it's a sense of its its vertical stance is being pushed over by the by the by the wind and it's being disturbed. It's very thin. It's got hor no horizontal stability, and so it's going to wave around in the in in the winter and in bad weather. Have you guys noticed this? When you know it's bad weather, that's when you see the light poles move moving around and and uh, flopping around. But you don't see buildings move around, do you? No, because they have a stable horizontal stability here. When you draw, I want to see this horizontal stability. I want to see that you have not only worked vertically, but you have worked horizontally. Okay? So do you guys understand what I mean by the horizontal and the vertical? In a body, a body isn't a stick. Isn't stick thin. If objects are stick thin, they're very small. Look at bugs. Bugs have a, a susceptibility to be very, very skinny. Objects that hang off other larger objects, like, like branches, they're holding on to a large object. Remember the bark that I told you about, the, the, the trunk, not the bark, the trunk of the body. Everything needs a horizontal form. Older trees, there's a reason why they are horizontal. There's, they're strong. They have a horizontal growth as well as a vertical growth. This horizontal growth is essential. Now, I'm referring to humans as trees. I'm comparing humans to trees because not only is there this length here, but there is this length. And if you keep the lines that represent the horizontal or width of the human being parallel in your original roughs with the parallel nature of the of the horizon or the, I mean the, 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 the surface of the earth or the ground, your drawing will look stable. Stability comes twofold. The fact that it is upward and all the fats are distribute, distributed, so for a person to stay standing, they need to make sure that they are within this line of, of, of balance. There's a symmetry line for balance as well as a symmetry line for anatomy. The symmetry line, when you are too heavy on one side, like, I know it doesn't make sense how Michael Jackson did the lean, but he stayed standing. But if you try to do this right now in your room, you're going to fall f face flat. Now, if you anticipate this horizontal stability here and stability comes twofold negative um, the, the, the vertical versus the horizontal here so the object is not only upward but horizontal in every way here the object will look like they're standing up okay yes the line is essentially the center of gravity thank you <coughs> okay need to leave hope to see the rest later. Thank you for coming, Amr. I really appreciate your presence here. So does everyone understand what I mean by function so far? Function is gesture. It is fluidity. It is the push and pull. It is the upward growth of the human body versus the downward pull of gravity. It is the way fat stacks on top of fat. It is the way bone structure limit, um, limits the, the, the development of fat. It is. It has everything to do with everything else around the body. This woman here, when you do a study, don't just think about the way her arms, what do you see, what do you read? And I've been watching, admittedly, I'm a, a bit, um, a bit, uh, I don't know what I should say, trained by Sherlock lately, and I've been, I've been pushed into reading the book as well. It's been very fun watching that show. Can't wait for the season to start again. 
But again, what he says is, don't just see, observe. I want you to read this, this, this drawing here like a book. Look at the stability. It seems like there's a small lean going upward. So this leg, there's an upward movement, a sort of a slope, a tiny slope, very small. This stable vanishing of the foot represents its horizontal stability for the rest of the body. This object gets heavier and heavier near the middle. This muscle is connected to the spine, keeping the spine positioned. All of these extremities for women are developed near the center. Woman is skinnier up here than she is down here. If you look at a man, much heavier on the top and on the bottom. Very small butts. Men have very small butts. It's very weird. <clears throat> I'm sorry for men <laughs> out there who have really tiny bums. Just do Brazil butt lift and you'll get a nice big touche in three months. Free, admerti free advertisement. Objects that are meant to be to deal with dex you know, dexterous um, uh, actions like holding down tiny little pieces of grass. These objects are smaller. But objects that support something as large as spine, these objects are heavier. They also anticipate the pregnancy that is upcoming. This all has to be understood, and I'm pointing to pointing you to all of this, but I'm not covering everything. Okay? I'm not covering everything at all. I've only scratched the surface. There's some stuff you have to learn on your own, and I can't cover it in an hour, or two hours, or even a month. There's some stuff that goes into the skeletal structure. There are different muscles that involve in different functions. You can go even deeper than that. How do muscles develop when you work out? How does the skeletal structure help out the muscle? What is the skeletal structure made of? Bone marrow. Bone, uh, skeletons are hollow, but they're not hollow completely. They're filled with the substance that keeps them malleable, that keeps them growing. They're not independent structures. They're not absent. Of, of development. They keep growing. They break. They develop back. They form back. What is in a, what is in a bone? How birds fly, but birds don't have filled bones. They have very hollow bones. Therefore, their horizontal movement is anticipated. They don't need the skeletal structure of vertical movement. Birds have a very horizontal build to them. Do you guys see what I'm saying now? Marrow is no longer... Um, uh, what, what am I saying? It's to please, Marrow. What, what have I said wrong? Oreo. Marrow. Did I say something wrong? Did I say marrow improperly? I don't know. So birds, if you were to draw a bird, or to draw the function of a bird, thinking vertically isn't going to help much. Thinking horizontally is going to help a lot. Does everyone know what I mean by that? Birds are designed to anticipate um, the horizontal flight, the pull against gravity. Therefore, they don't need weight anymore. We are grounded creatures. We need a stable, flat surface to stand upon, to be stable. Our bone structure has to be thick enough. And this whole class is just teaching you the power of bone structure. And I'm going to keep repeating this over time. I'm going to keep talking about this, refer you back to the power of skeletal structure. But now for homework, for all of you, what I want you guys to think about is for next class, when you do a figure, and all of you, all 58 of you, whether you want to be a part of this or not, draw a figure. But when you draw a figure, and draw it in full, I want you to analyze the structure of the bone. And don't erase any rough lines. Don't finish it and don't render it. I want to see the roughs. I want to see your understanding. I want to see your knowledge put into place. Okay? Exactly, Saro. Marrow is no longer needed. What they are, what they do have, are very light feathers to keep them moving against the air. And all when you study birds, if you do, if we want to do a, a whole class on birds, all I'll have to do is talk about function and the way air is involved, the way the body is designed to work with air. It's an air tool, and we've learned how to fly because of the way birds are designed how to fly. They take air as one part of their general surrounding. What is our general surrounding? Earth. Heavy, heavy, stable earth. Heavy, heavy gravity. We move upward and the thing pulls us downward. That is earth. And yes, I do play League of Legends. <laughs> My husband got me into it. <laughs> okay? 
So, noob, I'm not being strict. I, I, I'm just, I don't know. You want to call it strict, go ahead. But I think I, I, the word is that I would like to entertain is passionate. I'm really passionate about art. <laughs> yes, Penny, please work with reference. Here's the thing on reference. When you do 14-day challenges, I don't recommend reference because I want you guys to invent your own formulas for faces. You learn the function, and I want you to be creative. I want you to create. But what when it comes to understanding biology, how could scientists I mean if anyone here a medical student when my sister was taking pharmacy she had to look at dead bodies they had to see a severed head and look at it and see the function inside there's a reason why we use references in art because all other schools of knowledge or schools of thought that refer to the human body whether it is medicine or, or psychology they all have to study the bones and the muscles and the fat all of them whether it's a psychology doctor in psychology or psychiatry and um, doctor in, in, um, in, in uh, bone structure, they all have to go through medicine, medical school. And in medis medical school, they open up bodies, dead bodies that have been donated for research. This is one big extreme example of that. So Penny, by all means, for God's sake, use references. How can you expect to learn if you don't refer to the actual human miracle that we are talking about? which is the sophisticated structure of the human being. And just to close up this, this last lecture, and I know a lot of you are um, atheists, and I'm not trying to instill any form of thought, but there is a reason why, and take this simply as a text, as a piece of literature and nothing else. There's a reason why God asked Adam, everyone to bow to Adam, because of his extensive beauty as a human structure. And that is why we are researching and looking, this is why all 58 of you are here. You want to know how to draw a person, and persons are so hard to draw people because there's so much that is involved in them, so much thought, so much from the, from the single strand of, 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 of hair on the top of your head to the tiny little cell that is in the bottom of your foot. 